Hi everybody! Welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, we are so excited to share this project with you. Kevin and I have been busy working on this and planning this for actually a couple of months now. And it's to the point now that we are ready to share it with you and actually finish it up today. Let's take a little step back in time. A few months ago, we shared with you guys that we were gonna be putting in a new orchard here on the homestead. We designated an area well, this area that we're standing in as part of that orchard area. This, this area here is about an acre of land and we're not gonna use the whole thing for the orchard, but we are gonna use a good part of it for the orchard. Uh, we're gonna use it, the rest of it for some gardens. We're gonna use some of it for some berry bushes and grapes and things down the road but the main part of this is going to be for the orchard that we're putting in. But time has been of the essence because we've been working with Stark Brothers. Uh, they have wonderful trees. We're working with them and our orchard tree order is on its way. They right. actually contacted us just a couple days ago saying they were packing them up and they're about to be shipped. We knew this ahead of time, the week that they would be arriving. So we have been planning and working hard to get this project done just in the nick of time for them to arrive and for us to plant them in the ground. When we originally showed you guys this area, we were, wanted some suggestions from you about how we can keep deer out of our orchard and other plants that we're gonna be putting in this area. We have a large deer population in our area and it was really important to us to be able to keep them out as much as possible uh, from eating all of the things, all of our hard work basically. So you guys had some great suggestions. We read through all of them. We did a lot of research. We researched a lot of different things. And what we finally came up with is what we wanna show you today. It may seem a little unconventional, but we're excited to show you guys. We're confident that it's going to work because we've read a ton of testimonials from other people who have done this system on a smaller scale usually, but they've had great success with it keeping the deer out. Let's go for a walk. We want to show you what we've done so far so you can get an idea of what we're doing to keep the deer out of our new orchard area. Through all of our research, we finally came down to one solution that we think is going to be best for our deer situation, and that is what you see right here, a double fence system. We did a lot of reading and research, and we found an article from about 40 years ago in Mother Earth News that talked about using a system similar to this using two fences. It talks about how deer don't have great depth perception. And so deer can jump over a pretty tall fence, all the way up to about eight feet tall they can jump over. But when there's two fences like this, they can't quite figure out whether or not it's gonna be safe to jump over both of them and they don't wanna land in between them. So they stop and instead of going over, they just go around and go somewhere else. That's the system that we've come up with here. Uh, we decided it wasn't gonna be practical to put you know, an eight or 10 foot tall fence around an entire acre like this. So this is the system that we think is gonna be the perfect solution for us. But that also got us thinking that, hey, if we're gonna to go to all this work of putting up two fences and creating uh, this area to keep the deer out, it might as well have another purpose as well so we've actually decided to make this into what we're calling a chicken moat. Uh, it's gonna be a chicken run all the way around our orchard and growing areas uh, that will essentially end up being a chicken run that's about six feet wide, because these fences are six feet apart, by about 850 feet long. We're so excited uh, because this will give us a ton of room to be able to expand uh, the amount of chickens that we have. We're gonna get more ducks for in here. Uh, and we just really think that this is gonna be an awesome solution, not only for us and our, our fruit production, but also for the chickens to be able to have an, an enormous area to be able to free range. Now, when we had decided what we were gonna do and we were first planning this project, we were a little bit worried that this project would be just too much for us, that it would take too long. This is a huge project during a busy time of year and maybe we weren't even capable of doing this. Maybe we didn't have the skills. So then the polar vortex came and really set us back, it really pushed things, a lot of things around on the homestead and got us kind of behind schedule. So we thought to ourselves, you know what? We already have all of the supplies purchased. Maybe it would be worth our time to just 
hire a local fencing company to come out and put it, all of this together for us. We could draw out what we wanted and that they would come out and they'd do all of this for us. Now, we never hire out stuff. Right. You guys know that we do everything, the two of us. So right. this was unusual for us, but we thought, you know what, if we could just get it done, we could be working while they're working and get double the amount of work done. Right. Now I'll tell you, the supplies for all this project came to a little over $2,000 between the fencing, the T-posts, the gates, uh, all of that stuff. So uh, it wasn't a cheap project to begin with, we had two, like, two separate companies come out and give us quotes for the installation. One company's quote was a little over $6,000, and the other one was just under $10,000 uh, just to install it after we purchased all of the supplies. So after hearing those numbers, we just realized this is a project we need to do ourselves. Uh, this is why we do work ourselves, because uh, it just costs too darn much to pay other people to do work for you. So... Um, you guys, we've been really happy with the way it's turning out. Just recently, we did a video, um, one of our last videos, that we were talking to you guys about, you know, the fact that you probably are more capable of doing things than you give yourselves credit for, and we're the same way. We thought this was going to be way too hard for us to do, but now that we're in the middle of it, now that we're actually working on it, uh, no problem at all. We've been super happy with the way it's going. We are almost done with this project. We have the entire inside fence done and we have two sides and one corner left on the outside fence. So we need to get that done today. But before we start working, we do wanna go over with you guys the supplies that we're using, the equipment, uh, so that you kinda of know what we're doing. One thing with this type of project that you need to keep in mind is everything is times two. So everywhere there's a gate, there needs to be two gates. In our situation here, we've put in two four-foot gates. Uh, these will be the gates that we go through you know, every time we need to get in and out of the orchard on foot. And then over here, we've put in two 10-foot gates. These will be you know, not used as often. These will be used when I need to get in and out with the tractor or the, you know, the UTV or something like that. Now, we do still need to add some uh, fencing to the gates uh, so that the chickens can't get right through them. While we're talking about fencing, uh, let's talk about the actual fence that we're using. We're using uh, field fencing, uh, but this is not just standard field fencing for like cattle. This is actually what's called a graduated field fence. So these are four feet tall. Uh, the openings at the top, I think are about uh, six inches uh, wide, but down at the bottom, they gradually get smaller and smaller so that the chickens can't get right through them. The other thing that we're using a lot of on this project are T-posts. Uh, most of the T-posts that we're using are standard six foot T-posts. Uh, thank God for the gas powered post driver that I have because it has saved us so much time. So we're using T-posts. And then uh, something that I showed you guys in other videos actually when we were building our cow area for our last Jersey Cow Hope uh, is a system called the wedge lock system. It's something that I've used now many times around the homestead. I absolutely love, uh, and it's a way to be able to actually build your entire fence out of nothing but T-posts. Uh, in a little while, we're gonna actually show you how to install one of the corners. Uh, so I'll show you all of the parts then, but you can see that basically it just slides onto the T-post, another T-post slides in, and when you pull the fence tight, it pulls everything nice and strong. We're at the back corner of the area that we're fencing off. This is the last corner that we have to put in. I'm gonna show you guys how we use these wedge lock systems to put these in. And then we also have this row of fence going this way and this row of fence going this way to put in yet today. Those are the last things that we need to do. Now, that may not sound like a lot, but that's still quite a bit. This row of fence going this way is about, I think 270 some feet. And this row of fence going this way is about 150 or so feet. So uh, it's still quite a bit of work. Uh, we got a lot to do this afternoon. We're gonna start by putting in a nice strong corner over here. The corner that we're putting in is gonna be pretty much just like the one that you see here. And again, we're gonna be using the wedge lock T-post system. These really have saved us a ton of time. Now, you can see all the hardware is on here, and I'm gonna show you this in a minute, but I just wanna show you guys how strong of a corner this makes. You can see 
<clears throat> I'm putting all my weight on there and that thing does not budge. By using longer T-posts as these very corner ones, um, you really get some awesome uh, strength out of the T-post. So let's get started. Uh, I've already cut the top of this bag open. Now the wedge locks, when you order them or when you buy them, uh, we actually can get these right at our local uh, farm store here. Um, they come with a few different pieces and there's different kits depending on what you wanna do. So the kits that I have here, we're gonna be using two for this corner today. Uh, these are enough to do one brace. So there's basically three pieces. Uh, really depending on no matter what kit you get it's the same three pieces there's just more or less of them depending on the kit this is the collar that slides over the t-post and then this is uh, the wedge um, that's why it's called wedge lock that actually locks that collar into place like that and then you've got this angle brace that if you're doing uh, your bottom one goes like this so your t-post goes up and if you're doing your top it goes down so that it angles down just like that these are made out of aluminum, so they'll never rust. We've had some of these uh, in other parts of the homestead now up for several years, and they look just as good as the day we put them on. So that's awesome. I don't want to have to redo things if I don't have to. Like I said before, we're going to start by using seven foot T-posts in this corner. Now, if you were doing a perfect 90 degree corner, you would only need one of these you would only need one of the collars and one of the wedges because you can put these in like this and you can see that would create you know an angle going this way and an angle going this way but because we're doing not 90 degree angles we're actually doing you know kind of an odd angle here because we're following the angle of our driveway we actually will need to put in two separate posts just like you see here and then we'll have to use two kits. So it costs a little bit more when you're doing weird angles, um, but it gives you a nice strong corner. All right, let's get started. Now for these tall posts, I need to stand in the back of our UTV for the seven foot post because I'm too short to, to put them in otherwise. So Sarah's gonna hold the post and explain to you what she's doing. I'm gonna get the post driver started and then we're gonna get this corner put in. So basically I am just in charge of making sure that the angle of this T-post is correct, that it's parallel to the line we have laid out where the fence is going to go, and to the best of my ability, make sure it is straight up and down and just not tilted in any way. Now that we have this first post put on, we're gonna actually put our wedge lock bracket on the top of here. So again, this is the collar that slides over the wedge lock post. We're gonna put that where we want it here. And then this, this is the wedge that actually slides down and locks that into place. And then we've got our sleeve here. Again, because this is the top, this is gonna be angled down we're going to put that on and there's two little tabs on the top here that will just take a screwdriver and we'll just bend those so that that can't come back off. And now that is all locked into place. Now if we do need to ever move this we can just take this out and slide this up and down and I'll show you why you may need to do that at some point as we go along. So now we're going to show you how you figure out where your second post is going to go so that your angle brace is in the right spot. So there are instructions on the package about how to determine where your second post is going to go. But we have just figured out an easier way for us that seems less confusing and I'm just going to show you that. So temporarily I'm going to put this post in here. This is going to be the brace post and this is actually a six foot T post rather than the seven foot post we're putting into the ground. 
and I just uh, lay it on the ground in the bracket that Kevin just put in there. Then I grab a second post, and again, this is a seven foot post, and I lay it uh, just a couple inches away from where this is sitting on the ground. Now, the bracket that you're gonna be putting in in the ground is gonna be, you know, near the ground, and this post is gonna go up here and sit nicely inside of there. So this is basically how I measure. I just push up the bottom of this and lay it next to the end of the T post. And this is about the perfect amount of space that we will need for that bracket near the ground. And that's gonna help us just determine where to put this post. There is a little bit of flexibility if you need to move the bracket that Kevin put up on the top. That's why he said, you know, it's important to know that these are still movable because if you're off just a tiny bit, you can adjust up at the top to compensate if this just isn't exactly right. But this is an easy way to tell where this second post needs to go into the ground. Now that we have the second post in, we'll see if our measurement is right. So we'll put our collar on, let that slide all the way down to the ground. Put our wedge in. And now we'll just add our wedge on this one facing up like that. And we'll put our brace post in there. And you can see that that's in at the bottom and at the top. Now don't worry at this point if it seems a little loose at the top because what's going to happen is when you put your fence on and you start to pull your fence tight that's going to pull this whole thing together and give you a nice strong brace. All right so we've got this one done we're going to put another one in going this way and then we'll be ready to start putting in all of our line posts. All right, we've got both of these in now. Our next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna start laying out all of our line posts that go down this way. Again, this stretch here is about 270, 280 feet, somewhere in there. So what I'm gonna do now is you can see we have this, uh, this pink uh, string tied. We have this tied all the way around. We're gonna take our long uh, 300 foot tape measure. We're gonna run this out. And then Sarah's gonna come with the, a marking paint and we're gonna paint a dot every 10 feet. We're putting in posts every 10 feet. And then we'll be ready to start putting those in the ground. got all of our line posts laid out so we're going to start getting ready to put those in now i wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about my post driver uh, i use a rhino fence pro post driver it is hands down probably one of the best purchases i've ever made in my homesteading career it is such a time saver 
we have about 27 posts to put in on this stretch right here uh, i'll time it and let you guys know how long it actually takes but in general it takes less than a minute per post when i used to do all of these by hand uh, it would take me anywhere from 10 plus minutes per post and that would be then you know after every third or fourth post taking a break and having to rest now we can go down the line and we can do the whole thing uh, in no time at all so it is definitely a time saver uh, this is one of those situations that was hard for me to learn um, it wasn't until after i had to have three hernias repaired several years ago that i started to realize okay maybe some of these tools were invented for a reason and that is to make your life a little easier so uh, if you can afford one i highly suggest you get a post driver if you live in a place that has softer soil maybe it's not such a big deal but here in the ozarks we have uh, you know grass and rock is about what we have so it is hard soil here uh, it's hard to put posts in you can't just push them with the tractor bucket like you can in some areas uh, but this thing is a time saver and i highly recommend it All 27 of those T-posts are in. I use the stopwatch on my phone to keep track to see how long it took. It took us just under 16 minutes to put in all of those T-posts. Can you guys believe that? That is a time saver and a lot of energy saver. Right, absolutely. And no more hernia surgeries, hopefully. So that is also a money saver. Okay, so the next step is we need to get ready to start stretching fence all the way from the end, all the way to here. Pull it tight and attach it. Before we start actually stretching the fence, I wanted to show you guys something that I bought for my tractor. Now, we told you earlier how we had gotten some quotes from other people to put this fence up for us, and it was going to cost anywhere from six to ten thousand dollars. It was way too much for us to spend, but we did decide that instead of spending ten thousand dollars, we were going to spend about four hundred and fifty dollars, and we were going to buy a fence unroller for the tractor. So that's what this is. And this thing is another huge time saver. So we're gonna load the roll of fence in here and then we'll start unrolling it along the T-post. Ready? Mm -hmm. We're over by the corner post now. We're gonna get started attaching our fence. Now, we need to be able to basically wrap the fence around the corner post to get started so that there's a good, strong place to pull from. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just cut part of this fence off because we need some big, long pieces of wire here. So I'm gonna cut this very end off. All right, we're also gonna cut these off, these vertical pieces here so that we're left with just a long straight piece of wire here at the end to start with. All right, so this is pretty much a two person job to make sure you got a good start here. Sarah's gonna make sure we're positioned down at the bottom. I'm gonna make sure we have 
the fence kind of lined up vertically where we want it. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to start wrapping these long pieces of wire that we cut a minute ago around the T-post. I like to try to get around twice, which is why I leave those wires so long. So we'll wrap around the T-post twice, and then we'll wrap it around itself. And these top and bottom wires on this field fence, they are strong. So we got it hooked real good like that. And we'll just do that all the way down the piece of fence until the entire thing is connected to the T-post. All right, now that we have this all connected on the end post here, we're gonna get ready to start pulling. Now, my job is pretty easy at this point. I'm gonna hop on the tractor and I'm gonna start driving down this row of posts. I'll go pretty slow. I'll keep watching uh, Sarah behind the tractor here. She'll kind of tell me whether I should slow, slow down, you know, how things are going, if I need to stop for any reason. She really has the harder job at this point. She's gonna make sure this fence uh, stays standing up. She's gonna put just some temporary clips to hold it up in a few places as we go down the row. And then it's really up to her to tell me how much we need to stretch and all of that. So uh, she's gotten good at that job by the time we're done with this project for sure. So we're gonna start pulling this out and see if we can get this whole project done yet today. Now that we have the fence rolled out, we're gonna actually pull it tight. Now I showed you guys this a little bit earlier, but I'm gonna show you now exactly how this works. So we're gonna basically clamp the piece of fence into the fence unroller here. And we take these big bolts that they give you, and these are just gonna screw in here to hold this tight. And then I can pull the tractor a little more forward I will actually pull the fence tight. Now there is a little bit of a trick to learning how to pull the fence tight. It's taken us quite a few pieces before we feel like we're getting the hang of it. All right, now that we've got this all stretched the way we want it, we're just gonna go all the way down the row. We're gonna attach the fence to every T-post with regular T-post clips, either three or four T-post clips, depending on what it looks like the fence needs in that spot. Well, that piece of fence, 280 feet with all the T-posts, the corners, the fence, everything is up. That is as far as we're gonna make it today because we have church tonight. We need to get home, get cleaned up and get going. But you guys, that was a good day's work done. Tomorrow we're gonna finish it up so we can show you guys the entire finished product. Just in time for our trees to arrive really in the next couple of days. We'll see you then. We finished the rest of the project this morning, you guys, and it turned out awesome. The entire thing is done, both layers of fence, all the way around, all the gates, all the corners, everything done. And it couldn't have come at a better time. Remember we said that our trees from Stark Brothers were on their way. Well, they just happened to come last evening. So the next big step is going to be to plant these trees in the orchard. Planting the trees and moving the chickens into their new run area are going to be a couple things coming up here in the near future. 
Uh, we need to figure out exactly what days we're going to do that, but you guys be watching for videos about that. We're excited to get this orchard planted. Now we have a couple modifications that we're planning uh, down the road. We don't have to do that immediately, but we need a way to prevent raccoons and things from either digging underneath or coming over the top. So we do plan to run a wire, an electric strand on the bottom and then right at the top of all the outside fencing to prevent that from happening. But we don't need to do that quite yet. We need to focus on getting these trees in the ground and getting our chickens moved. So we hope you guys are excited as we are to see the chickens move in and to see how this area fills up, not only with the orchard, but with all of the other plants and things that we're planning on doing in there. I think over the next you know couple of years, it's gonna really turn into an awesome area here on the homestead. You guys, we're excited to have you along on the journey. Thank you so much. Remember that if you're enjoying our videos, so please hit that subscribe button below so that you're notified of our new videos. And remember the best way to help us here on the homestead is to share our videos on all your social media. We'd really appreciate it. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.